Hi Dave. My name is Sally and I'm friends with Holly, who I'm sure you're very familiar with now. I really like to talk to you about women in music, or more specifically one particular woman in music who has been such an inspiration to me, who introduced me to the concept, like the proper concept of feminism, being proud of your sex, gender, who you are, um, sexuality, everything. She is brilliant um, and also slightly controversial and problematic along with it, um, which is great. So um, I'm going to talk to you about the wonderful metal violinist Emily Orton. <laughs> I know one of the things that um, those pesky dames commented on when they did their videos with regards to women music was um, that they didn't actually listen to many, much music with feminist lyrics in it. Um, I also noticed that they very much focused on women in the pop industry. That's my personal observation is that women in the pop industry, industry are actually doing spectacularly well at the moment. You've got people like Adele, Rihanna, Lady Gaga, Florence Welch, all making a spectacular amount of money on their own terms. And then people didn't really talk so much about the rock genre. In comparison to the pop industry, women in the rock industry are still very much underrepresented. What makes Emily Orton so great is that she is very much in the rock genre, probably with elements of goth and metal as well. And she most definitely writes songs with feminist lyrics in them. I am going to be forced to put a huge trigger warning on the whole of this video. Um, given the fact that the majority of Emily's music is about mental illness, suicide, and rape. I can't exactly remember how I got into Emily, but I definitely remember when. Um, it was my third year of uni, and I was studying um, ancient and medieval history, and one of my modules was um, classical tradition in 21st century literature. For this module, I had to do a presentation on Procne and Philomena, which is um, an extremely grisly, um, very dodgy tale from Ovid's Metamorphosis. I'm not going to explain the story, you can look it up on Wikipedia. Um, major trigger warning, by the way. So I had to do some research for my presentation, and I read this one particular article that just ignited nothing but rage within the deepest, darkest pits of my heart. This article was called The Voice of the Shuffle is Ours. It just opened my eyes to suppression of the female voice throughout history. I was studying ancient and medieval history. You can imagine the, the primary sources I've been reading. Um, I did my dissertation on Joan of Arc and all the horrible things that have been said about her. I couldn't believe I'd been reading all this so numb to the complete wrongness of it. Around the same time, um, I had discovered Emily Orton's album, um, Ophelia. It went hand in hand, and, and then I just became obsessed with Emily and what she was trying to say, and it just it's just changed who I am. Ophelic is Emily Orton's second album, which I have here. The prime um, theme and subject matter of Ophelic is Emily's own suffering with bipolar disorder. There are also extremely strong themes about um, sexism in our society, misogyny, rape culture and suppression of the female voice throughout history. Um, there's also a comment on society's fascination with the emotionally scarred, traumatised, damaged, vulnerable young woman and how they're sort of fetishised and seen as attractive, um, which is just, it's totally wrong. The art of suicide, pretty and clean, conveys a theatrical scene. Fetishization of emotionally vulnerable young women um, is of course extremely dangerous and a huge contributor to rape culture. There are songs on Ophelia that deal directly with the subject of rape culture. If you've ever read Lolita by Vladimir Novikov, you will know that it's about a paedophile. He sees this young girl as a tease and it's all her fault that he uh, preys upon her. And society's perception of this book has been that Lolita, yeah, Lolita's become a label for a sexually precocious young uh, young girl. 
Emily Autumn's song Gothic Lolita is very much uh, both a comment upon this perception by society and also her own personal experience as a victim of rape at a young age um, and how it's seen as her fault and the man was only behaving as all men do. Um, lyrics like, the law won't arrest you, the world won't detest you, you never did anything any man wouldn't do. I perfectly understand, so it's my fault. Other tracks on Ophelia's that deal with this specific subject would be the album's closer, Let the Record Show. The song that I would say deals most directly with rape culture on Ophelia's um, is the song Thank God I'm Pretty. Which only means that when it's dark outside I have to run and hide Candle behind me Thank God I'm pretty Thank God I'm Pretty um, is an extremely personal song to me. Um, I cannot listen to it without wanting to skip it. It upsets me so much um, because it just hits so close to home. Thank God I'm Pretty, as you may have gathered just from that little short extract, is all about the objectification of women in society, how their bodies are seen as public property, how their looks are placed above any other um, asset they might have. Any woman who's walked down the street and been wolf whistled or catcalled at, followed, stalked, had their ass grabbed, anybody can relate to this song. And it's not just in her music that Emily draws attention to this fact. She also very much comments on it in her stage shows and her photo shoots. The fact that her body is hers. Emily is well known for choosing to wear extremely little on stage and has in fact performed burlesque strip acts on her stage show before or just ripped off her clothes because she felt like it. Although Emily dresses in this fashion, it's not really sexualized. It's it really is a power statement, the fact that she chooses to dress this way and no matter what she's been through and what people have done to her, she's still very much in control of her own body. Of course, boys will be boys. That's so sweet. Take it off! Two, three, four, you take it off. <laughs> She is awesome. Emily has a new album out pretty much exactly one month from now called Fight Like a Girl. As the title would suggest, Fight Like a Girl's main theme is fighting back uh, against patriarchy. The reaction to Fight Like a Girl amongst Emily's fan base has been interesting, to say the least. And Emily has been accused of misandry, demonising men, hating men, wanting to kill all men. They have a particular problem with the lyric, even if you're only a boy. The way I personally interpret this lyric is it's turning insulting phrases that men have used against us and against each other at the expense of us um, on their heads. Undeniably, as I said at the start, Emily Autumn is a problematic and controversial figure. Her use of a wheelchair during her stage show has been heavily criticised. She does have a reason for using it, it's because when she was institutionalised she was forced into a wheelchair despite being able-bodied. It's a controversial thing that some people have problems with. Emily's not perfect, she says and does things that I don't agree with, but in terms of being an inspiring, empowering, extremely talented woman in the rock industry who is doing things on her own terms. I think she's brilliant. Uh, I absolutely love her. She's one of my favourite musicians. You know, I recommend you go at least check her out. She, she's great. I think that's it from me. I really hope you enjoyed my video and that you check Emily Autumn out. So, that's it from me. Bye!